<laughs> Fake numbers. It's very loud, low. Every birthday, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we have to adjust the the thing on it because we're set up for other stuff mode. But yes, um, it's it's October, the month of Spooky Ween, and I can think of very few things spookier than the human body because after all there is literally a human skeleton inside of the human body so let's go on an adventure a where's the image where's the image there's the image a 3d body adventure Ooh. huh and um Coughing almost kind of looks like the weird little bacteria thing or whatever that is on the thing there. But yeah, we got some fresh midis in here. And I think I decided the way I wanted to do this was I wanted a preview window of this here and move this over to there. Okay, because this is 640 by 480 and I can see it a lot better. 3D Body Adventure was the only game I ever wanted to play all throughout high school. Oh, yeah. Um, so what do we have? We have the 3D Body Reference. 3D Body Theater. Emergency Room Game. 3D Body Models. Body Recall Game. And the Visible Body. So I'm just gonna... I mean, it's like very encyclopedia-like, so it's not like we're going to go through here and listen to every single article in the encyclopedia. But just kind of see how each thing works. Let's go on a 3D body adventure. Move the mouse to rotate the body or to peel away its layers. Click the mouse or hit any key to restore the cursor. And click directly on the body to begin your adventure. Let's get to those nice, tasty organs. Oh yeah, lungs. I happen to be having problems with those. What does it say about the lungs? The oh lungs. yeah. And get your 3D glasses and put them on. Uh, boop. Ta-da. Look at that. It's as if the lungs are leaping right out of the screen at you. Actually, that's a really subtle 3D effect. I can tell anything by the red and blue fringes on the side of this. But I guess it's better than nothing. BRB opening up my copy of Rad Racer. Rad Racer? Nice. You can click on this. And we don't even have to read anything. It'll talk to us. The lungs are a vital organ which enables the body to obtain oxygen from the air we breathe and to eliminate carbon dioxide. Breathing is accomplished with the chest wall muscles and the diaphragm muscle which separates the chest cavity from the abdomen. When the chest cavity expands, the lungs expand with it, drawing air down into the lungs. When the chest cavity relaxes, the lungs shrink and waste carbon dioxide is expelled. The lungs are not directly attached to the chest wall. Instead, they are encased in a double layer membrane called the pleura. One of the pleural layers is firmly attached to the lungs, with the other one firmly attached to the chest wall. There's always a small amount of fluid between the two pleural layers, which allows them to freely slide over each other. All right, the lungs are divided into distinct are lobes, which are supplied by their own airways, bronchi, and their own arteries. On the right side, there are three main lobes called the upper, middle, and lower lobes. On the left, there are only two lobes called the upper and lower lobes. This anatomy is illustrated in the 3D model above. The fissures that separate the upper and lower lobes on both sides are called the major fissures. The right lung also has a minor fissure that separates the upper and middle lobes. Notice how the minor fissure is nearly horizontal, but the major fissures run at a steep angle. When a doctor listens to the breathing sounds on your back, he or she is listening to the lower lobes, even when the stethoscope is placed high up by the shoulder blades. One of the disorders sometimes seen in the emergency room is collapse of the lung. Surprisingly, the natural tendency of the lungs is to collapse into a small ball near the center of the chest. 
They are held in their normal expanded state only by the attraction between the two layers of the pleura. If you have ever tried to separate two sheets of wet glass, then you know how this works. Occasionally, air gets between the two pleural layers, causing them to separate, and the lung collapses. This is called a pneumothorax, meaning air in the thorax, chest cavity. The air can either come from the outside because of a penetrating wound, or from the inside because a part of the lung developed a hole in it. Another problem that is sometimes seen is excess water between the two pleural layers. This is called a pleural effusion, a condition commonly referred to as water on the lung. There are many causes for a pleural effusion, some benign and some quite bad. A pleural effusion is typically treated by sticking a needle or a tube into the chest and draining out the fluid. I like how the scrolling on the text outran the actual narration. Like it started out where he could keep up with it, but eventually the, the text just went off the top there. All right, I'm going to click on this button again. There's that 3D action again. Ooh, as I slowly move the mouse from side to side to rotate that amazing 3D model. Up and down doesn't do anything. Just left and right for that rotation. They also have a A to Z button as well. It's like the lobes are right here with me. <laughs> oh, but... Oh, left upper lobe. Click for more about the respiratory tree. Right upper lobe, right middle lobe, right lower lobe. Oh, click to view the large airways. Okay. The large airways. The large airways include the trachea, windpipe, and the bronchi. The first branching point in the respiratory tree is called the carina. The trachea divides at the carina to form the right and left main stem bronchi, which each enter one of the lungs. The photograph above shows the carina. The main stem bronchi then divide to form the lobar bronchi. There are three lobar bronchi on the right side, upper, middle, and lower, and two on the left, upper and lower. The lobar bronchi, of course, go on to divide again and again into even smaller bronchi. The photograph above was taken with an instrument called a bronchoscope. Like the endoscopes used to study the digestive system, the bronchoscope has a light and a camera lens at its end. It is different, however, since it is straight and rigid rather than flexible. The bronchoscope is most frequently used to look at the inside of the airways in order to help make a diagnosis. Surgical tools can also be manipulated through the bronchoscope enabling direct treatment of some medical problems. Another common use of the bronchoscope is to pull out foreign bodies which have been accidentally breathed in. Of interest, most foreign bodies wind up in the right lung because the right main stem bronchi takes a relatively straight path down from the trachea, while the left main stem bronchi branches at a sharper angle. Yeah, now this is the section where it's like they didn't even try to make it more interesting or anything it's just like yep here it is it's medical textbook <laughs> descriptions of everything Let's see they have a button here for the large airways so a full screen view this kind of predates mouse wheels a little bit so spinning the mouse does absolutely nothing you have to is scroll up a page, scroll up a line, go back to reference screen, scroll down a line, scroll down a page, did arrow key, whoop. Wait a second, did this? No, okay. Sometimes it glitches out and I actually have to grab the whole window and drag it off the screen and back on again in order to um, restore everything. The large airways. So the MS-DOS, version of this has a when you click on a to z eight. it actually shows yes eight to z that's that's the real alphabet eight b eight. c d e f g <laughs> uh, you click on this it shows a large 26 large buttons that you click on for every letter of the alphabet to jump straight to that section 
but all this has is scrolling, 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 <laughs> and more scrolling. Almost eight. Hey, eight. almost eight. Well, as we just discovered, the alphabet actually is not A to Z, but it is eight to Z. <laughs> oh, but welcome in, and thank you for seven. Well, we've had stranger numbers than that tonight, so we know it's a real number. Uh, yep, this is 3D Body Adventure. This is the Windows 95 version. This is brought to us by Knowledge Adventure. And actually have the DOS version kicking around as well, so we could actually do a little comparison between the two. Put the mouse back in the right place here. Yeah, what I discovered by accident... Nerve communication. Whoop is that when you're on this index, you can actually press keys on the keyboard. So if I press Z, it jumps down to Z. But now I pressed H. Is it actually going as I type it? Okay, H goes to hair. Okay, and then backspace takes me back out again. B-L-O-O-D, blood. Yeah, I don't know how many articles in total they have listed in this lung scan. lung scan oh and even these pictures are in 3d that's nice click to learn about pulmonary emboli well i'm familiar with that one all right oh click here to learn about lung cancer click to see a chest x-ray sure we'll look at an x-ray chest x-ray chest x-ray Standard X-ray of the chest, heart is a relatively dense structure, etc. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So I'm gonna chest move on to the other stuff. Whoop. What does this do? Rotate model, rotate torso, rotate body. All right, because you also have a more close-up view as well, it makes it kind of a little bit easier to, you know, just snag a specific organ you're interested in. Oh, spleen. We gotta listen to the one for spleen. Ooh, 3D spleen. Kinda looks like a chunk of chewing gum that somebody stuck to the bottom of a table at a restaurant. The spleen. Yes. The spleen is an organ whose major functions are to remove worn out or misshapen red blood cells and to help fight infections. The spleen has a sponge-like internal structure that is filled with lymphocytes and phagocytes. The phagocytes, engulfing cells, do their job by engulfing foreign particles. The lymphocytes perform their role by producing antibodies which help in the elimination of foreign invaders. In the fetus, the spleen actually serves as the site of red blood cell production, but this job is taken over by the bone marrow after birth. Although helpful, the spleen is not an essential organ. If it is either removed surgically or rendered non-functional because of disease, its functions are taken over by other parts of the body. People without spleens, however, do become more susceptible to infections by certain bacteria. The most common cause for spleen failure is sickle cell disease. The abnormal red blood cells damage the structure of the spleen and cause it to stop working, usually before the age of 10 years. I actually had no idea the spleen did any of that stuff. I just always knew it as the organ with a funny sounding name. <laughs> Can we find pancreas? Is pancreas in here somewhere? There it is. Of course, pancreas made famous by uh, Weird Al's song about it. Ooh. Ah. Eek. <laughs> the pancreas. And of course, pancreas, the pancreas. does insulin. Kind of important. <laughs> the pancreas. But now it's about time we go to the main menu. Whoop. Emergency room game. The MS DOS version of this. There are actually two runners that have runs uploaded for the DOS version. 
I don't know if there was any anything even submitted for the Windows version, though. Save the patient. It's up to you. All right, and here's one of those moments where I have to drag the window off the screen and just like that fixes it when I bring it back up again. Emergency! Okay, first patient, Judy Miller, female, age 46. Two years ago, I had an ugly black bump removed from my back. I didn't want to go see the doctor, but when it started to bleed, I knew I had to do something. The bump turned out to be a melanoma that was quite deep when they removed it. Now I'm having pain in my chest, and I'm very scared. It's time to operate! <laughs> go up to the virtual medical unit, click to activate. You are now inside the patient's left lung. To help this patient, you must find her tumor and destroy it. Remember that she has a history of malignant melanoma. Is that history important in any way whatsoever? No, it's not. We just look for the... Sounds very empty dash 32. PLS removed. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right lung, or the correct lung, I should say. It might be in the other... Oh, nope, here it is. This looks tumor-like to me. Yeah, I actually wanted to use the um, usual. Uh, it just means draw your best to Yeah. Oh, okay. We did it. work. The patient is doing better since you removed the melanoma metastasis from her lung. Malignant melanoma is the most the serious form of skin cancer. Life and death. It is most common in fair skin <laughs> people who have been overexposed to the sun. Severe sunburns as a child are a notable risk factor for later development of malignant melanoma. Melanomas typically develop on parts of the body which receive significant sun exposure, such as the arms or the back. Malignant melanomas have several distinguishing features Much that one should be aware of. They typically appear as dark bumps with irregular borders and or irregular elevations. They tend to have variegated colors, including shades of red, blue, and black. They may even begin to bleed spontaneously or ulcerate. Treatment for melanoma depends largely on surgical excision of the skin cancer. Once it spreads, it becomes much more difficult to treat. Early detection and treatment are thus the key to cure of the disease. The incidence of melanoma continues to rise in the U.S., almost certainly due to the popularity of sun tanning in our culture. If you must be out in the sun, it is wise to use sunscreen, which protects the skin from the harmful and aging effects of the sun's ultraviolet rays. Yes, very informative indeed. Um, so I actually would have used our usual um, OPL3 sound font for the MIDI on this, um, but it's actually like missing one of the channels for some reason. So I figured the easier way to go was to just pick a different sound font for the time being. It's still got that classic sound to it, I think. Oh, didn't even... <laughs> we just went straight into operate and without even looking at the diagnostic information console. Yeah. Well, next patient. Roger Green, male, age 47. Duck! This is the worst pain I have ever felt. My chest feels so heavy, and my left shoulder is aching. I can barely breathe. I tried my nitroglycerin pills, but they didn't help at all. My father had a heart attack when he was my age. I think this is the same thing. I'm so worried. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at your take a look at your information. Symptoms: severe chest pain with radiation to the left shoulder, marked anxiety, diaphoresis. Physical exam, temperature, 36.9 degrees Celsius, 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Pulse, 104 beats per minute. Blood pressure, 128 over 82. Eight. 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 Double eight, eight, even. Skin, cold and sweaty. Heart, irregular rhythm with abnormal fourth heart sound present. EKG, 
ST segment elevation in leads 1, AVL, and V4-V6. Laboratory studies, CPK slash MB pending. Meanwhile, he's dead from his heart attack while we've been um, looking at that console. Time to operate! You have been transported into the patient's heart. To help this patient, you must find all ten of the cholesterol plaques and eliminate them. Remember that he is suffering from severe pain in his chest and left shoulder. Hurry, every second is critical. Every second. But it's fine, we got 300 seconds. Or we could zap some innocent cells. Oh no! You zapped a red blood cell! Red blood cells make up about 40% of the blood volume. When doctors measure this number, it is called the hematocrit. Sometimes the number of red cells in the blood goes down, either because too few cells are being made or because they are being destroyed prematurely. This is called anemia. Under normal circumstances, a red cell stays in circulation for about 120 days before it is removed from the blood by the spleen. The best part about this is you get these long-winded messages. The patient's health is still ticking down the whole time. Let's go roleplay as some alcohol. Nope. Lung. Nope. Stomach. Brain. Oh no! You zapped a nerve cell! The nervous system contains many billions of neurons, nerve cells. However, neurons do not grow back after they die. A baby starts its life with all the neurons it will ever have. <laughs> Many neurons may be damaged by a serious infection. Fortunately, people are born with a great excess of neurons. Well, that's reassuring. In the meantime, let's go save his life before he dies. Huzzah! Excellent job! The patient will recover from his heart attack thanks to you. Complete blockage of a coronary artery cuts off the oxygen supply to part of the heart muscle. If this blockage persists long enough for part of the heart muscle to die, it is myocardial infarction. Diagnosis of a heart attack requires any two of the following three things. One, a history suggestive of a heart attack. Two, a significant rise in the blood level of CPKMB. CPKMB is an enzyme found only in heart muscle cells that is released into the blood when the heart muscle cells die. 3. EKG changes characteristic of a heart attack. Recently, it has been shown that treatment of heart attack victims with strong blood thinners soon, less than six hours after the infarction, can improve the odds for recovery. These blood thinners, thrombolytics, work by dissolving blood clots and thus reopening blocked coronary arteries. Emergency balloon angioplasty can also be used early on to try to open up blocked coronary arteries. I'm also noticing the narration is not exactly matching the text. Well, next patient. Mary Redmond, female, age 25. Ouch! That hurts! Don't poke me in the belly like that! My stomach has been hurting for the past two days. Yesterday I vomited twice, and now I have diarrhea! I'm getting weak. Today I even collapsed at work because I felt so lightheaded. Doc, please help me! I am feeling so sick! Checkered diagnostics just says what we already know. Ooh, 99.3 degrees Fahrenheit. A little high. 110 beats per minute while laying down, 135 while standing. Blood pressure, 115 over 65 laying down, 95 over 50 when standing. Hmm. It's probably enough of a difference to make you quite dizzy, huh? Abdomen, left and under... left, upper quadrant, and... Epigastric pain during palpation, no masses, or... I think something got switched there. <laughs> Organomegaly? Hmm. Let's see, stand up. Pressure drops. 
so heart rate goes up to compensate for the lower blood pressure. Oh no, that's good. Yeah. Well, we better we better go inside. Time to operate. You have been transported into the patient's stomach. To cure this patient, you must find all ten of the viruses and eliminate them. Remember that she has been suffering from nausea and vomiting for two days. Okay. And what if we shoot the good cells in the stomach? Oh no! You zapped an intestinal cell! The lining of the small intestine is designed to absorb food particles. This lining is covered with many small finger-like projections called villi. The villi are in turn covered with cells whose surfaces have many tiny finger-like projections called microvilli. These intestinal lining cells normally have a short lifespan of only four to seven days. This is shortened even further by an infection which may severely damage the intestinal lining. Riley, don't die if I do. <laughs> Live from the digestive system, it's the villi people. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 da, da, da. Oh no! Oops. Fortunately, you can bypass the uh, bypass the narration just by a single mouse click. Sometimes these things hide. Fantastic work, doctor! You have cured the patient of viral gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis is a common cause of abdominal pain and vomiting. It is caused by any of a large number of different viruses or bacteria that a person may be exposed to by consuming contaminated food or water. This case of gastroenteritis was caused by a rotavirus infection. Symptoms can vary from mild to very severe. Generally, gastroenteritis lasts only a few days and resolves without any problems. Treatment depends mostly on replacing lost fluids. It's time to see another patient. Sig mode viral gastroenteritis, sig mode. <laughs> viral gastroenteritis, viral gastroenteritis. <laughs> Did I skip one? No, okay. Patient, Thelma Rose, female, age. 173 facipum. <laughs> facipum. <laughs> uh, age 83. Eight. Yep, 8. Eight. E3. Doc, I'm feeling terrible. I've had a high fever for three days. I was doing great, and then all of a sudden I was sick. I'm very short of breath, and I'm coughing up pinkish red stuff. My chest is killing my me on the left side. With my obsession with singing eight <laughs> syllable phrases. <laughs> oh yes, we're well aware of that though, aren't we? Oh, chest killing on left side. I'm definitely getting worse. Doc, I can't take much more of this. Please help me. Well, you're 83 years old. Eight. Maybe it's just your time to go. Nah, we can fix this. We can fix anything, thanks to the wonders of modern medicine. You are medicine. now inside the patient's left lung. To cure this patient, you need to find all ten of the bacteria and zap them. Remember that she has had a fever and a cough for several days. Avoid damaging healthy cells. Speaking of which, have we... Sigs mode, but I think she should just chill out Sigs mode. <laughs> I think we should have damaged a healthy cell. Have we damaged a healthy cell in the lungs yet? Oh no! You zapped the lung cell! The trachea and bronchi are lined with cells that have tiny hairs, cilia, on their surface. These hairs continually move back and forth in a sweeping motion to help eliminate foreign material from the lungs. Respiratory tract infections of any type damage these cells and make it more difficult to clear fluid and pus from the airways. Viral pneumonia typically involves both lungs, while bacterial pneumonia frequently involves only a single lung. Been there, done that. <laughs> Do not recommend. hiding behind this one I had to oh yes yeah school bus would help right now Yay. 
Well done, doctor. You have cured the patient of pneumococcal pneumonia. Pneumonia is caused by an infection of the lungs. Of the many pathogens that can infect the lungs, the most common is the bacterium Streptococcus pneumoniae. Yep, that's the, the one. Pneumococcal infection is generally confined to a single lobe of the lung, an illness referred to as lobar pneumonia. When lobar pneumonia occurs, most of the small air spaces within the infected lung lobe fill up with water and pus. This illness is diagnosed readily from the history and physical exam, along with the chest x-ray, which shows opacification of the affected lung lobe. Fortunately, the pneumococcus is relatively sensitive to antibiotics, and the prognosis is good for patients that are properly treated. Of note, the patient's clinical status will improve long before the chest x-ray will return to normal. The patient will generally feel much better after only a few days of antibiotic therapy, while a couple of months are required before the affected lung lobe appears completely healed on the chest x-ray. Yeah, yeah, that was what I had. It was a strep throat that turned into pneumonia. But it's time for another patient. Mike Connor, male, age 12. Doctor, I was bitten by a crazy dog yesterday, and I'm really scared. The bite hurts a lot. I wasn't even doing anything to the dog. My mom was worried that I might get rabies. She said you were going to stick me in the stomach with a bunch of really big needles. Can I leave now? Nope. Oh. <laughs> a transformation has occurred as a result of the dialogue. Oh, dog man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Radioactive dog with the ability to lift his leg and pee on fire hydrants. <laughs> nah, sounds like the rabus. Let's go get the rabus. You have been transported into the patient's brain. To cure this patient, you need to find all ten of the viruses and zap them. Remember that he was bitten by a mad dog just yesterday. Avoid damaging healthy cells as it will cost you valuable time. You know what? He's young, he's healthy. Let's use him as our guinea pig to demonstrate the failure condition. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Critical condition! Oh no! The patient is now in critical condition. This procedure has been terminated. Stand by for unit reset. Please attempt the procedure again immediately. <laughs> All right. And this time we won't screw it up. You have been transported. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case anybody ever wondered what rabies looks like, I guess that's it right there. Do it again. Yeah. You almost killed him. Try again, please. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think there are no negative consequences. You have cured the patient of a rabies virus infection. Rabies is a viral infection of the nervous system. The virus is transmitted to humans by rabid animal bites. Many cases are the result of dog bites. Raccoons and bats are other common carriers. Worldwide, there are an estimated 15,000 cases of rabies each year. There are very few cases in the U.S., however, Connor. largely as a result of intensive efforts to vaccinate dogs. Untreated cases are usually fatal. It's totally what I was thinking. Treatment is given to patients when there is reasonable suspicion of rabies exposure following an animal bite. The primary treatment involves a several-week course of anti-rabies antibody shots. The treatment works by enabling the body to eliminate all the rabies viruses before the disease develops. Fortunately, the medicine has changed and it is no longer administered through the stomach. That's good, I guess. Do we have any more patients? Alice Milner. With me if you want to live with rabies. <laughs> oh, it needed the pause. It didn't do the pause. <laughs> Alice Milner, female, age 39. Hang on. She looks a bit older than 39 I feel like uh, she, is not <laughs> she is not 39 I'm glad you agree that is <laughs> maybe 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 she lives in meth county or something <laughs> uh, 
What, what is, what's your story? Doc, I've been feeling out of breath for the past few days. I'm also having problems with my right leg. The Not calf... <laughs> yeah. The, the calf is red and swollen and it hurts to walk on it. This happened to me once before when I had an operation. Back then my doctor put me on blood thinners and I got... Better. Yeah. <laughs> I got... Better. <laughs> that's... I don't know, that's funny for some reason. Just... Just the one... One... Um, one word on the other side of the fold there. Well, sounds like we need to operate. You have been transported into the patient's heart. To cure this patient, you need to open up a blocked vein. Remember that she has been complaining of shortness of breath and pain in her right leg for several days. Hmm. Blocked vein. So that means it's going to be in between. Oop. Oh, there's your problem, lady. You've got hyper lemons. Careful. Excellent. You have cured the patient of a pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism uh. typically occur when blood clots form within the large veins of the legs and then break loose. These blood clots then travel through the right side of the heart before lodging in the pulmonary veins. Once lodged in a pulmonary vein, a blood clot cuts off the supply of blood to a wedge-shaped segment of the lung served by that pulmonary vein. The affected lung segment rarely dies, however, because it also receives oxygenated blood from the bronchial arterial system. Nonetheless, Here's pulmonary embolism is a serious illness that usually causes <laughs> shortness of breath and chest pain. Diagnosis is most often made on the basis of the ventilation perfusion scan which shows the segment or segments that are not receiving blood because they are blocked. Treatment is dependent on blood thinners which prevent new clots from forming while allowing the body's natural mechanisms to dissolve the existing clot. The main risk factors for the development of pulmonary emboli are a history of inactivity, such as that caused by recovery from an operation, and a previous history of pulmonary emboli. Yeah, no, I'm real familiar with that one. Uh... That was, that was what took out my dad. Okay. Alright, oh, next up. Another golden girl. Estelle Gold, female, age 83. Eight. Eight. Doctor, I feel like the hearing is going in my right ear. At first, I thought it was my imagination, but lately my right ear has been ringing. Otherwise, I feel great. Do you think I'm crazy for coming to the emergency room? Maybe I shouldn't have come in, but I'm worried since the ringing won't go away. Yeah, that's tinnitus. What you have been say? transported into the patient's heart. To cure this patient, you need to find her tumor and eliminate it. Remember that she's been suffering from progressive loss of hearing and ringing in her right ear. Not tinnitus? Tumor? Oh my. Uh... Brain. Brain o'clock. Oh, it's here somewhere. Come on, there's only four possible places in the body. Here it is. Aha. Oh. You zapped a nerve cell. Hmm. Okay. Awesome work, Doctor. You have successfully yeah. removed the patient's brain tumor. This patient had an acoustic neuroma, so this is a benign Mario brain Walter tumor that arises Nintendo from the Schwann cells again. that surround Amazing. the eighth cranial nerve. <laughs> The eighth cranial nerve is responsible for hearing and balance, which explains why the patient had symptoms of hearing loss and ringing, tinnitus, in her ear. Acoustic neuromas account for about 5% of all primary brain tumors, i.e. tumors that start in the brain rather than metastasizing from somewhere else. As they grow, acoustic neuromas can cause deafness as well as other symptoms, facial pain, double vision, facial weakness. By compressing first the 8th cranial nerve and then the 5th, 6th, and 7th cranial nerves. Treatment depends on surgical excision. The prognosis is generally good. Yep, that's right, Donut Dante. <clears throat> 
Mario is Dr. Mario is back. But this time but <laughs> Yeah. Interton formative. But this time but this time Dr. Mario is doing surgery. Whoa. Oh, that was kinda neat. Can we do that again? Oh. Maybe not. We had a weird we had a weird texture glitch going on there. Well, it's time for the next patient. Ed Smith, male. Age 102? Holy shit. Alright, what's your story, buddy? Look, I was walking in the living room about an hour ago when I just fell down. Now I can't even move my left arm or leg. The whole side of my body feels numb. Something like this happened to me once before. Blood so we yeah. can live forever too. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but it went away after a few minutes. This time I'm not getting any better. Please help me. I don't know, buddy. I think... Hang on. 100... 102. Also, he kind of... Kind of looks like Stan Lee a little bit. Hmm. Time to operate. You are now inside the patient's heart. To help this patient, you need to go exploring and open up a blocked artery. Remember that he is <laughs> suffering from sudden paralysis of the left side of his body. Move quickly. Every second makes a difference. Yeah, but we have 300 seconds. I don't think it's that bad. Okay, not this one. Not this one either. Not this one either. Okay. Take out the turbo lemons on the way to the brain. Life gives you brain lemons, make brain lemonade? Amazing job! The patient will recover from his stroke thanks to you. A stroke occurs when the blood supply to part of the brain is interrupted for long enough to cause damage to the brain. Blockage of the arteries supplying the brain is the most common cause of stroke. Emboli often form at sites of cholesterol plaque buildup within the carotid or neck arteries. The emboli can then break off and travel upwards to the brain, thus causing a stroke, infarct. A head CT is usually performed to make sure that the patient's symptoms are indeed attributable to a stroke and not to some other cause such as a brain tumor. The location of the infarct can be reasoned from the symptoms that the patient describes. The nerve fibers that control motor function and sensation cross over to the opposite side of the body. In this case, it is clear that the stroke must be on the right side of the brain, since the patient complained of weakness and numbness only on the left side of his body. Most likely, the stroke will turn out to be in the right internal capsule, a place in the brain where the nerve fibers for both the left upper and left lower extremities are close enough to each other to be affected together. Recovery from strokes is quite variable. Sometimes, much of the initial dysfunction is due to swelling within the brain, rather than cell death. And in such cases, recovery of brain function is nearly complete. Well, that's good to know. And also, so the um, previous in-joke makes sense. Let's go back to... Back to the... 30... 39-year-olds, apparently. Thing. I mean, well, I was going to say, maybe it's just bad JPEG, but no, no, we got, <laughs> we, we got all sorts of things going wrong here. Let's see, who else do we have? Oh, Will Parker, male, age 15. Doc, this morning I had a sore throat. Say, 55 is the rule 39. Hmm. Yeah, I guess maybe we have... Maybe we have made a few enhancements in medical science since 1995? I'm not even 100% sure of the year on this one now. Earliest computer I can remember using it on is the AST Advantage. Yeah, that's what we had. Doc, this morning I had a sore throat. Then all of a sudden I got really sick. I have a terrible headache, the worst I've ever had. I can barely move my head because my neck hurts so much. I vomited twice today, and I have a fever. This is happening so fast. Please do something for me. Well, kid, you got 
COVID somehow. <laughs> uh, it's like totally uh, a lot of the same symptoms. Okay. You have Clearly. been transported to the patient's heart. To cure this patient, you need to find all 10 of the bacteria and eliminate them. Remember that he has had a high fever, a stiff neck, and severe headaches for the last 12 hours. Dr. Avoid Stop zapping healthy here. cells. Hurry, <laughs> time is of the essence. <laughs> yeah, fortunately we are in a we're in a universe where all problems can be um, solved by shrinking and going into people's perfect 90 degree um, walls. Oh, oh, brings where I was wanting to go. Oh, wow, what are these? There's like little silver brains with tentacles inside of his larger brain. Brain, please. Yeah, but be careful not to shoot in between the tentacles, because that would probably... Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you shoot right in between the tentacles, then it does not count. Great job, Doctor. You have cured the patient of bacterial meningitis. Meningitis is caused by inflammation of the membranes, meninges, which surround the brain and spinal cord. Many organisms can cause meningitis, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi. These organisms usually reach the meninges through the bloodstream, after first starting the infection somewhere else in the body. Bacterial meningitis is a rapidly progressive, life-threatening illness. It is diagnosed on the basis of the history, I got my physical brain, exam, please, done and the results week. of the lumbar puncture. Like the lumbar puncture is done to curves. obtain some of the fluid. <laughs> That's what this sounds like a lot. Energy. It's like, um, when meningitis is present, this fluid soup. can be cloudy because of the presence of white blood cells and bacteria. Antibiotic therapy must be initiated as soon as possible. When treated promptly, the outlook for full recovery is quite good. Eh. Who needs, who needs antibiotic treatment when you can just go inside and pew, pew? Oh, it's my meninges. <laughs> Hazel Cook, female, age 51. 51. That's a more convincing 51. Actually, she looks... She looks younger than the 39. <laughs> What's your story? Doctor, I've been losing weight for a few Eight. months. Eight. 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 And I've been having sweat... Sweats at night, not sweets. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I usually have sweets at night. Um, my belly has also been hurting for a long time, but it has gotten much worse recently. Yesterday, someone at work told me that the side of my neck looks swollen. Something must be wrong. All right. You are now inside the patient's heart. To help this patient, you need to find her tumor and eliminate it. Remember that she has been suffering from severe abdominal pain for Doc, several I'm weeks. Too many candies <laughs> after, sorry. Uh, don't, is it don't, don't feed them after midnight. Yeah, don't, don't feed the patients after midnight. So, abdominal pain. So, stomach tumor. No, nope, lung. Brain. Stomach. There we go. Very well done. The patient is doing better since you removed the lymphoma from her abdomen. Lymphoid tissue cancer is called lymphoma. This is a diverse group of cancers whose prognosis varies widely. Most typically, Ask patients present one or more painless enlarged lymph nodes along with symptoms loss, of chronic brain, illness, please, such as protracted brain, weight loss. Please, screen, because lymph nodes counting. are present throughout the body, <laughs> lymphoma can involve nearly any organ. In this case, the major site of involvement was the left upper quadrant of the abdomen the spleen. Lymphomatous <laughs> masses are sometimes removed when symptoms justify surgical Oh, like this late night infomercials about however, all the different jobs you can train therapy, for. Chemotherapy yeah. or both. Click. Larry Simpson, male. Age 19. Not sure why. Hmm. 
He's seen things. Things the world will never understand. <laughs> Doc, I haven't been able to go to school for more My than a week. Is the of locations. <laughs> yeah. My stomach hurts the most, but I also have a headache, and I can't seem to eat anything. I think I've been running a temperature, but we don't have a thermometer in the house. I feel nauseated. Oh no! I think I'm going to throw up. What is his temperature? Ah, oh, damn. 101.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Pulse 64 beats per minute. Blood pressure 122 over 78. Lungs normal. Breath sounds. Abdomen marked. Epigastric abdominal pain during palpation without rebound. Tenderness marked. Sp splino splenomegaly. Neuro normal. Whatever. Let's do let's do e surgery. You are now inside the patient's right lung. To cure this patient, you need to find all ten of the bacteria and zap them. Remember that he has had fever and abdominal pain for more than a week. Bacteria again, huh? Oh, bacteria! I was seriously wondering why everybody was up so late, and then I remember it was Saturday. I need to get my brain fleas done again, I think. Hmm, yep. Yep, good old, good old brain fleas. Speaking of, though, I don't see anything in this lung. I think they dropped me in the wrong lung. My grandma makes a meat splenomegaly. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hiding in here somewhere. See, I like the arpeggios in this song. Hmm, I didn't see anything. Try the other one again. No, nope, I don't see a thing. I'm gonna go on a exploration. Brain? Nothing up here. Stomach? Aha. Oh no. Your hot dogs. The the hot dogs got frisky with the spaghetti. Well, kid, if you've been eating that, n no wonder you got sick. Whoop. Also, who programmed this thing to drop me in the lung when the problem was in the stomach? <laughs> Hot dog spaghetti. It sounds, sounds so similar to creatures in Minecraft. Well, not that anybody would be too familiar with it, but this sound is the exact same sound that plays Great when you work. skip a level you in Mario Maker. The of typhoid fever. Typhoid, typhoid fever. fever is caused by eating either food or water contaminated by the bacterium Salmonella typhus. The infection is spread from person to person through feces, usually by contamination of water supplies with sewage. Infection can also be spread through the handling of food by typhoid carriers. The bacteria pass initially from the intestine into the blood, where and then to the liver and <laughs> spleen, where they multiply. Next, they are secreted by the liver and concentrated by the gallbladder. Your new name is now At this point, the Typhoid Larry once again for life. The intestine, but now in enormous quantities. The most worrisome complications are significant box, intestinal Larry. bleeding and no, that's how you get, intestinal um, perforation. Oh, damn, Diagnosis I forgot the name of it. by culturing the bacteria from the blood, feces, or urine of an infected patient. Treatment is dependent on antibiotic therapy. Yes, it is that's not it. uncommon to recover from the illness without serious incident, but to remain a carrier for many years with the organism sheltered within the gallbladder. Yep, my my brain fleas are acting up. <laughs> Who else we got? John Atkins, age sixty-five. Wow, that's <laughs> that's a face. <laughs> Doc, for the past few months, 
Whenever I walk up the stairs in my house, I feel pressure in my chest. The you pain is beginning. Like he on the <laughs> oh yeah. Atkins accounting? Yeah, yeah, it checks out. Pain's been getting worse and worse lately, and sometimes I even feel pain in my jaw and my left shoulder. When it's really bad, I have to sit down for a while, and the pain seems to go away. Well. You have been transported into the patient's heart. To cure this patient, you need to find all of the cholesterol plaques in his arteries and eliminate them. Remember that he has been suffering from chest pain brought on by even mild exercise. Hmm. Oh. oh no. Uh, Atkins diet. Not even once. This guy's got poop in his bloodstream. He's been hanging oh. out with Mary and Jared Clayton. Poop and lemons. Yeah, buddy, maybe... <laughs> maybe you were meant to die. Why? More lemons over here, too? Oh, what the heck? Fried shrimp? I don't even... I'm surprised this bastard... You are the best doctor around. The patient's angina is gone since you cleared the cholesterol plaques from his arteries. Angina pectoris occurs when the oxygen supply to the heart muscles... this bastard is didn't die in the ambulance. The heart is deprived of oxygen, and the patient experiences pain. Sox Most commonly, DP. angina occurs yeah. with mild stress or exercise. Angina is caused by narrowing of the coronary arteries, usually due to a buildup of cholesterol he survives on The stairs. pain can be relieved with medication, <laughs> but definitive treatment requires intervention to restore normal blood flow to the heart muscle. Coronary balloon angioplasty and coronary artery bypass grafting CABG are the most common or methods of cab treatment. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, he's a you damn kids get off my lawn kind of face. Ugh. That was pretty hard. That might be the boss operation right there. No? John Davis, male, age 27. Doc, I've been feeling terrible for three days now. I can hardly move. I've never been this sick before. I have a high fever, and I'm having a hard time breathing. I keep coughing and coughing, but hardly anything ever comes up. I feel like I'm going to drop dead. Please help me. Okay, well, here we go again. You have been transported into the patient's stomach. To cure this patient, you need to find all 20 of the viruses and zap them. Remember that he has been suffering from fever, cough, and shortness of breath for several days. 20 viruses, huh? Of course they're not here. There's gonna be ones. I think it's just a night of case of huh. Batman fever. No, he... This is the wrong color. I'd say he's been snorting bump nuggets. But, no, they're not green. I wonder if I have green bump nuggets inside of me now, and that's why I cough so much. I've been keeping count of how many of these I have zapped. Okay, I'll go back to the other long line. Aha! Thought you could hide from me, huh? Amazing job! 
you have cured the patient of influenza pneumonia. The flu virus typically causes a relatively mild upper respiratory illness that lasts anywhere from three to seven days. Rarely, however, the influenza virus can infect the lungs themselves, causing a very severe form of pneumonia that can be fatal even in young, healthy adults. Although there is no specific therapy for this viral illness, it is difficult to distinguish influenza virus pneumonia from the more commonly seen bacterial pneumonias. This patient would thus have been treated with antibiotics, as if he had a bacterial pneumonia, such as pneumococcal pneumonia. A failure to respond to antibiotics as expected is often the clue that signals doctors to look for an unusual cause, as in this case. It's time to see another patient. Well, sure, there's a cure for it. You just shrink down inside the body and zap all 20 viruses. Boom. Just like that. Verna McNeil, female, age Eight. 69. Nice. Hello, doctor. My back and my right arm are hurting. I fell off a stepladder this morning, and I landed on a tile floor. I don't think anything is broken, but I wanted to get it checked out. Have you seen my x-rays? Not yet. Do you mind if I step outside for a cigarette while you look at them? Uh-oh. Bum, bum, bum. Neck and back pain, right wrist pain. 98.6, perfect temperature. Pulse 82. <laughs> Chest x-ray, small, 1.5 centimeter density in the posterior segment of the right lower lobe. Bone x-rays, the right wrist series is normal, the cervical, thoracic, and lumbosacral spine series show no evidence of fracture. You have been transported into the patient's left lung. To cure this patient, you need to find her tumor and eliminate it. Remember that she is a long-time smoker. Yep, she got the cancer. And they dumped me in the wrong lung again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't, don't smoke, or you'll get broccoli in your lungs. Quick well and done. easy. You have cured the patient of lung cancer by removing it before it could spread. Typically, lung cancer isn't diagnosed until symptoms appear, such as a worsening cough or chest pain. By this time, the cancer has usually spread and the prognosis is poor. Sometimes, however, lung cancer is detected on a routine chest x-ray, performed for some other reason, as in this case. When detected early, lung cancer can often be removed surgically, with a good chance for complete cure. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in both men and women in the U.S., and cigarette smoking is the main cause of lung cancer. The incidence of lung cancer is strongly related to the amount of smoke a person is exposed to. Quitting the smoking habit is the best thing a person can do to minimize their risk of developing lung cancer. Hmm. Well, it was kind of funny, the people that joked because of the statistic that shows that if you quit smoking, you increase your life expectancy by X number of years. And so they're like, hey, I'm going to start smoking so I can quit. <laughs> like, no, no, that, that, that doesn't work. You can't cheat the system like that. Jeremiah Jones, male, age 65. Wow. Those eyes. Sig Motler, in the lungs, is Bruno's tiny tumor Sig Motler. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty small. Uh, I've been feeling lousy for a while now. I've been losing weight, and sometimes... Well, Wait. Eight. Eight. <laughs> okay. Losing weight. And sometimes I get fevers that come and go. I've also been coughing in the mornings. Before, nothing ever came up, but lately I've been coughing up thick green stuff. Sometimes I feel a bit out of breath. Please help me. Okay. Eight. Time to operate. You have been transported He's into the patient's brain. To <laughs> cure this patient, you need to find the source of his infection and eliminate it. Remember that he has been complaining of fever and a productive cough that has lasted for more than a month. Hmm. 
long time. This one looks fine. Go to the other one. There you are. Ooh. Let's get this reduced down to just a single one. I see this, and it kind of reminds me of Donnie Darko. Like the... whatever the name was of the... Uh, oh well. It's gone now. It can't hurt you. You have cured the patient of pulmonary tuberculosis. Oh, Why tuberculosis are you wearing that silly is a highly infectious illness caused by the bacterium Mycobacteria tuberculosis. The infection is passed from person to person through airborne droplets resulting from coughing or sneezing. Most typically, the lungs are affected, although TB can infect nearly any organ. In the vast majority of cases, the immune system is able to control the infection. Oftentimes, however, control is achieved through the formation of small, walled-off nodules called granulomas. Inside the granulomas, there are still bacteria in a dormant state, which can reactivate at a later stage in life. The patient in this case had a large right upper lobe cavity caused by reactivation of bacteria within a granuloma. The incidence of TB in the U.S. has been dropping for many years, but it has begun to rise again in recent years. This is attributed to the AIDS epidemic, which has created a large number of people with weakened immune systems who become infected and then serve to spread the disease. More worrisome still, new TB strains are emerging that are resistant to all known forms of antibiotic therapy. Eight. Ooh. Heavy stuff. So there we go. That is the, that's the face of TB right there. Who else we got? Judy Miller, female, age 46. Oh, is that it? Oh, we're done. Hooray. Every single person in the world has been cured. Time to go home. <laughs> really long hallway. Oh, the emergency room or exit. But then there's also, oh, emergency room or elevator. Check this out, we got a little museum of like weird modern medical art. Rabies virus. This is a picture of a rabies virus. The rabies virus is a member of a family of rhabdovirus. Okay, yeah, that's fine. This is? Antibodies. Antibodies. Neuron. Neuron, okay. Stanley Parable DLC is awesome. The brain. <laughs> this photograph shows a human brain. Nice. And a 3D mystery object. Eight. Eight. Yeah, let's see. Exit. Okay. We're outside now. Hot hospital. But where's the parking lot? All of these trees are very perfectly symmetrical and evenly spaced. Is that the moon? Is that a star? Dude, where's my car? The game. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was a rear entrance as well. Emergency? Whoop. Okay. So the emergency takes us directly into an elevator. Ah! I don't think elevators work that way. Oh, okay. And now we're in an upstairs hallway. Elevator exit. Okay, now we have the lung room. The lungs. The respiratory lining. Respiratory lining. Influenza virus. Oh, is this flu? It's got like a chunk missing out of it. Inf 
Influenza virus. Oh, okay. So, there's two different views of it, I guess. And here's the exhibit on the heart. Coronary artery disease. Oh my. Basically, question mark. Birthday. Question Basically, mark, birthday. Question mark, question mark. What's going on, Axio? Yep, this is 3D body adventure from like 1990 something or other. The heart. And we have just successfully saved every single patient in the world by shrinking down inside of their bodies and zapping their lemons and or broccoli. Coronary angiography. <laughs> That's a mouthful. See, now this is the educational part where if we look at all the fun pictures... Heart People with coronary artery disease are... It's just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of... Useful information, but very dry. Epic. I remember mouse ball burst person movement theory. Yeah, it's wild. Mouse forward, backwards, etc. It's actually, I think. Okay, yeah. Arrow keys do work as well, but it's. Eh. Mouse is the preferred way of doing that. Back to the first floor. Elevators still don't work that way. Okay, and then this is... Uh, it's difficult to tell if I've even covered everything. There's like one more room in here somewhere. Because that was the brain room. No, okay, the stomach. Uh, I feel like this, these models used to rotate more slowly than that, maybe. But that was back on a Pentium 75 megahertz. It's endoscopy. Okay, endoscopy. Microvilli. Microvilli. Mm, what's... Ooh. <laughs> Rotation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's this thing? The small intestine. Small intestine? Oh, it's it's got layers. It's like Shrek. <laughs> and the... Uh, Rotavirus. Oh, do I have that turned on even? Maybe not. Here's the thing. Oh, I think his brain... Where is his brain? Is his brain here? Text-to-speech. Um, I think the first thing I have to do is reload the brain, and the second thing I have to do is activate the brain. Uh, where's the... Too many folders. Too many folders. Don't worry, XD. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm just shit percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stream. Unfortunately, because I clicked off the window, that means we have lost our midis until we leave the hospital. Uh, scripts. Then we want uh, robot brain. Where is it? Oh, this one. Robot brain. And apparently Bowser is the special guest for day this time. Hey robot, how do you perform surgery? Oh. I have an Igueva, an uncharted subject, the pleasure I must experience at tearing such conundrums apart. First, you must have the appropriate tools, and I assure you, they are quite exotic and require much practice to master. The scalpel, for instance, is a weapon of precision and skill, but the key to success lies in the art of the incision. One must know exactly where to cut and how deep to ensure the surgical outcome one desires. Oh, the delight in making the unwilling prey tremble with anticipation of the procedure that is about to ensnare them. Ha, ah, an almost sensuous delight indeed. 
Now if you wish for more detailed information, I suggest consulting a medical book written in all Italian, which will provide you with an exhaustive overview of surgical practices through the ages. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, back to the main menu. Yeah, this is actually running native in Windows 11. It's a little jank, but it actually runs, so... So let's see... Uh, I'll save the body theater towards the end. But now we have the 3D body models. Let's take a spin around the body. Time to get those 3D glasses ready to go again. To view an organ model, click on one of the organ icons displayed on either side of the screen. Skull. Oh, you can actually rotate along both axes this time. And I think all of this is just completely pre-rendered. Or maybe not, I don't know. It would have been software rendering, because the computer I played this on initially did not have anything even remotely resembling an accelerator. Ah, and there it is again. Skull, now in 3D. Brain? Yeah, this has the strangest mouse code on it, though. So there's a minimum distance the mouse has to move before it actually rotates the model. So if you move it too slowly, you get no motion at all. But then, once you hit the minimum required speed, it just kind of goes nuts. So getting very precise control over this is quite difficult. I wanted to line this up, but I guess maybe it doesn't have a frame for that. Line it up to where the two hemispheres... Well, I guess this kind of works. Like, from front to back, I wanted to just be able to look directly through. I... I see you. Hm. It doesn't let you rotate this one all the way around. It'll only do... Like, from this far down to that far. Ear. We've got the outer ear, but we also have all of the components of the inner ear as well. Lungs. We've seen a couple of these already because they're also visible in the other modes. Art. Oh. We line this up first, right? We can click on the button. Right? Oh, there we go. Ooh. <laughs> See, line it up in just the right place. Now, when you move the mouse up, it goes inside for the crazy fly through that. If the CPU speed were just a little bit lower, it could probably be made to view smoothly. But that's also one that's available in the movies, so we can see that in a little bit. Hey, gallbladder! Just the thing that we've always wanted to see in glorious 3D. Like, my life is now complete, I don't know about everybody else's. See? Still on, still on the vine. Just like those tomatoes you can get in the store that still are attached to the vine. Shoulder. This is one where it actually has an action feature to it. So you can rotate from side to side, but if you do up and down with the mouse, it operates the shoulder joints. It's while they taste home, bro. <laughs> yeah. Keeps it fresh for longer or something. Elbow. So where's the where's the funny bone? 
This bit right here is a bit that I always end up whacking and deeply regretting. Hand. It's got some major flex to it, like all the way down. I'm using this the game with Seymour Skinless. <laughs> hey, can I play? What's going on? It's a it's a frog. It's um so this is 3D body adventure, uh, made by Knowledge Adventure. Oh, and I can be frog too. I'm frog now. Hey, there we go. <laughs> uh, I got most of the frog Pokemon in already. Uh, yeah, frog is. Uh, where's the? Oh, wow. I lost our. I lost our. I lost our Midas. Oh well, that's fine. Yeah, uh, we like we like the old shareware stuff around here. I'll do a frog. Frog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eight. one of the many oh eight. Yes, eight. we also like we also like Stanley Frog. Parable around here too. Uh, but yeah, we had um Frog. one of these so I, I like going through shareware co co compilation CDs and one of these actually had um that frog sound effect, so it's been a meme around here ever since. Yeah, this is oops, we're in, okay, bring the window back up. Yeah, so this is interesting because it's like trying to be educational and entertaining at the same time whoa, whoa, whoa. this is the section though where we got the um this is where you're supposed to put your 3d glasses on so you can look at all of these 3d models in 3d it's like classic red and blue style 3d glasses ah the pelvis truly uh truly a wonderful bone indeed knee Oh, this one doesn't have the action feature. It just rotates. I mean, I guess we already had... We had the elbow and the shoulder. I think I have the 3D glasses from my copy of Rad Racer. Let me grab them. <laughs> Rad Racer again. <laughs> yeah, that's the second um, reference to Rad Racer tonight. Ankle. Yep, ankle's just another one that's just shows you the outer surface and doesn't really do anything. The ankle is a hinge joint connecting the bones of the lower leg, tibia and fibula, and the uppermost bone of the foot, talus. The ankle is held together by several strong ligaments which provide stability and prevent excessive movement. The ankle only allows simple upward and downward motions of the foot. Other foot movements require motion of the joints within the foot itself. Because the ankle is subject to great stress, sprains of the ankle ligaments are very common. Each foot has 26 separate bones. The two largest foot bones are the calcaneus, heel bone, and the talus. Long tendons attach many of the bones of the foot to strong muscles located in the lower leg. These tendons can be seen in the 3D model shown above. There are a number of disorders that are frequently seen in the foot. These include corns, bunions, and gout. Corns are small areas of thickened skin, usually caused by tight-fitting shoes. A bunion is a firm, fluid-filled lesion that forms over the base of the big toe. Like corns, bunions are usually the result of wearing tight, pointed shoes. Bunions sometimes require surgical removal and reconstruction of the great toe to prevent them from recurring. Gout is a form of arthritis that commonly affects the joint of the great toe. Gout results from the formation of uric acid crystals within a joint. These crystals cause significant inflammation and pain in the affected joint. A person suffering from an attack of gout in the great toe is generally unable to even stand on the foot. Unlike corns and bunions, which are more common in women, gout is ten times more common in men. I remember from Pepper's Adventures in Time that Benjamin Franklin suffered from gout. But no mention whatsoever of the Achilles tendon. How disappointing. Body Recall. And now we get another actual game type element. Let's play Body Recall. That would have been an opportunity for mythology. Yeah. Click on one of the 12 tiles to see what lies beneath it. Remember what you see. Concentration is the key. The object of the game is to match each picture with its name or with its function. Actually, that's funny. Isn't concentration... That's the name of the... Like, that's the trademark on, like... No, wait. 
you know, concentrate, which... Eh, my memory is fried. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, this is just memory matching game. So stomach, liver, nope. Lungs, kidneys, brain. Okay, there's the liver. Wait, did I even click on liver? Yes, liver. I did. Okay. Lungs. Lungs. Kidneys. Kidneys. All three of them are like right on top of each other. Okay, brain. Heart, stomach, heart. Okay, heart to heart. Heart. Stomach to stomach. Brain to brain. brain. Level one complete. Well done. Shoulder, vertebrae. Hey. Shoulder. <laughs> Spine or vertebrae. Yeah. Vertebrae. Pelvis, knee, ankle, knee. Okay. Knee. Got it. Pelvis. Yeah, we just saw that. Ankle. Nope. An ankle. Ankle. There we go. And then the elbow. Elbow. Perfect. Great job. Third round, final one, and we get a small reward. Okay. Hearing makes insulin. Holds vocal cords. Sound and balance. Ear. That's the ear. Ooh, um, digestive system. And what? I'm actually not sure what this is other than like a beanbag chair with like uh, absorbs food. Nope, that's intestines. Intestines. Yep. Uh, <laughs> something. Oh, babies grow here. There we go. Uterus. Uterus. Whee! Stores bile. Um, oh. Gallbladder. Gallbladder. Yeah. And once again, fresh on the vine. Looks like a bold voice. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Larynx. Oh, okay. So that's what that is. Oh. Uh, hmm. Probably didn't know it looked like that. Pancreas. Oh, that's the pancreas. Nice. Okay, here it comes. You did good, kid. <laughs> worth worth doing. So let's see. Last feature they have here on the bottom is the visible body. Let's explore the visible body. Beaverish. Yeah. And totally unlike the style of anything else in this. Move the mouse to travel through the body from head to toe. Click the mouse to restore the cursor. Here's another Move one the cursor where it's over the body to display the names of the body parts. Slightly weird. Just one of the side effects of not running it on the operating system it was intended for. If we drag the Glitch window, work. Work. drag the window off screen and back on again. Ooh, um, we can get it all. There we go, and it's back. So yep, we have um, MRI scans, just what we always wanted. We got. It. Stomach, anstrom, colon, hepatic flexure. A little bizarre to see a full body right. Mm, this is very educational. I wonder if they found any unwanted surprises on this, though. It's like, you know, the person at the company volunteers to be the person to have the complete MRI done of them. They're like, um, Frank, you have colon cancer. <laughs> Uh, I almost wonder if there's like any Easter eggs like this in here. Like if you were to search through the entire thing, you'd find something that wasn't supposed to be there. But yeah, this actually allows you to... Um, so you can go through all three different um, views of it just like that. Uh, looks like the one on the side here, though. Yeah, just the main view. The big one right here is the only one that actually gets 
labeled with stuff. And of course, Corpus Cavernosum Penis. Because you know every single kid, that's the very first thing they would go to and try to click on as soon as they finished installing this game. Got all the parts of the brain labeled as well, very nice. Oh, and the sinuses, hey! Finally answer the question of why I get the severe sinus headaches. This is like right behind... Yeah, that's exactly the place. Ah, but now it's time... Now it's time to Let's watch go the see videos. The 3D body movies. This is the most aesthetic section of this entire thing. To view a movie, click on one of the five movie icons displayed across the bottom of the screen. Use the scroll buttons to display additional movie icons. Click on the 3D button to see the movies in 3D stereo. Oh yeah, do we want 3D on or 3D off for this? Also come to think of it, I should probably turn the... Um, turn the... Where's the thing? I want to turn the bitrate up. Because I had it turned down so we didn't get com... I mean, we got com errors anyway, but... The idea was that I would have fewer com errors. On. On? Okay. And let me find the... OBS scripts, potato mode. Da, 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 da. I comment out these lines of code and then I uncomment these lines of code. And I just have to tell OBS to reload the script and we will have higher bitrate scripts. Reload. Oh, over here. Okay. Click to select the flyby through the brain. Now I'm the video that brain can't walk in a 20 new dash turned out the future with 173 short. Pituitary. Yep, that's that's cat alright. Cerebellum. Occipital lobe. Parietal lobe. Temporal lobe. Frontal lobe. Cerebrum. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> just repeats until you Brains. tell it to stop. Now. Fly by through the ear. Pinna. Eardrum. Ossicles. Semicircular canals. Cochlea. Cranial nerve eight. Oh, that almost could have been a seamless loop. I like the bass on that track. Ooh, flyby of the heart. Right atrium. Tricuspid valve. Right ventricle. Oh, this one is like pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery. Ooh. 
left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic valve, aorta. It's like the space army of stage is Star Fox, only with less Falcons giving you sass. <laughs> yeah. And that that guitar solo though, it's <laughs> I mean it still still sounds like Midas, but <laughs> it's good. Ooh, skeleton. There's a bravo. Yeah. I haven't found a good slippy model that will work with my system yet. Femur. Pelvis. Yes. Sternum. Cervical spine. Lumbar spine. Scapula. Do 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 smooth miss miss. Do 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 smooth miss miss. Here's a Halloween fun fact. Did you know there's a scary skeleton inside of all of us? <laughs> oh, that was the joke that I started this off with. I said, well, you know what it is, it's October, the month of spooky wing. And there's nothing spookier than the human body. Pelvis. Because there's a skeleton inside every single one. What's <laughs> my mouse cursor here? Okay. Great. <laughs> oh, I know. Lie by down the center of the spine. Cervical okay. spine. Thoracic spine. Lumbar spine. Fine. <laughs> I feel like they could have done like a bobsled Eight. style trip. Eight? Uh, bobsled style trip down the spine too. The first part of the song though, it just immediately made me think of um, uh, Linus and Lucy, Peanuts theme. Oh, oh, clicked off the thing again. Okay. Next group of movies. Uh, okay. Muscle fiber. Muscle cell. Myofibril. Actin. Myosin. It's not your sin, it's myosin. Cell. Uh, we're coming up though, coming up on the, the heart attack movie. Just two more until we get to it. This one's kind of infamous. Hi, here's Lappy, how stupid this cat is trying to drink from a facet. 
She's so close to getting it right, but her firmness is her and it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we got the one cat that likes to get up in the sink and wants us to turn on the faucet, but not too much. She likes just a little tiny trickle. Heart cycle. She's right in the best and that's what's important. Mm-hmm. Right John entry. Madden. John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. Dad growing up was just as long right as you know how to do it. Football. Football. Atrial ventricular valve. John Pulmonary Madden. Pulmonary valve. <laughs> John Madden. Pulmonary artery. Left atrium. Left ventricle. Aortic valve. Aorta. So I think whoever did the mastering for this set of videos should have done a slightly better job on the mixing because the background audio is like almost louder she than the narration. Oh, it's like my it's like my favorite insult well, yeah. to use where you say, were you dropped on your head repeatedly as a small child or was just the one time sufficient? <laughs> Uh, what's next? The heart conduction system movie. Actually, that background audio is kind of creepy here. The wind and all of that. Ah. Uh, Electricity moving at its native speed. <laughs> uh, here it is. Heart attack movie. I know, right? Myocardial infarction. You know, as a kid, very first time. I don't know, but the first time I watched this, you know, just that music. Yeah, that music. That music. The. And then the other pain noises. Especially the way the narrator just says, Myocardial infarction. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Perfect start. the last thing you should be laughing at, but it's just so hilarious. <laughs> oh, the only thing is if the, if the narrator, yeah, if the narrator saying myocardial infarction could have just been mixed in louder, then it would be a perfect, a perfect video. Well, move on to the Artery movie. I don't know about the video, but I love the audio track off of that one. Is that the last set? Yep, okay. And this is the last set of videos right here. Capillary.
Another good one, too. I almost wonder what kind of synthesizer they were using for recording this, because I kind of remember, like, the Korg M1. I think that was a sampler. It had different cards that you get for it to load different samples up onto it. Pupillary response. Pupil. <laughs> Simple and to the point. The lens movie. This one demonstrates how everything um, actually is like on the retina upside down because of the lens. Retina. But my goodness, the little upside down T on the inside of the eye is difficult to make out at that resolution. And then eye structure movie and eight. brain synapse movie. And apparently thought I said eight, eight again, but that's fine. Or maybe somebody hit eight. I have no idea. <laughs> Sclera. Retina. Lens. Iris. Cornea. synapse. I love the idea of all the little brain lasers going pew, pew, inside your head 24 hours a day. Also, I feel like this little switch here on the front of the monitor should do something, but it does nothing. It's like, come on, don't put buttons, don't put buttons on your interface that are just there for looks. See? They got it right on the main menu, these buttons. Change the picture out. But that's it for 3D Body Adventure. Unless we were to like actually sit here and have the narration read out every single one of the articles in the encyclopedia for us, which would take a very long time. They did actually manage to fill up the CD. It's over like 600 megabytes of stuff. <laughs> and we got credits. Entire emergency game programmed by one person. Oh, I wonder if that phone number still works. Custom medical stock photo. Oh, okay. And with that, we are unceremoniously dumped onto good old clouds.bmp. <laughs> Let's see, how long? How long have we been doing this for? Do we have enough time to. I guess we could do... Well, we could do this if I can get this working. Because it's a little bit more complicated. This, I just double-click on the EXE. The other one, i got to fire up DOSBox. Then I also have to mount a CD image. Just for comparison, the MS-DOS version um, is interesting. Like, instead of having the... Um, pre-recorded audio for the movies. It actually had midis for everything. New folder, new folder. I need to like always remember to immediately rename my folders as soon as I make them. There we go. I want to mount you. Ah, and the open with 
pop-up menu is going to take us time. Okay, there we go. Explorer. Now, the city is drive. Very good. Let's see. Mount. Oh, no. Actually, I can just do this, right? F colon. Yes. On the D drive, because I use the D... Uh, virtual drive for DOS games and the W virtual drive for Windows games. And then I need to uh, go over and change the capture over real quick. It's kind of a pain to set up because when the window is maximized, it um, it's wide instead of maintaining the four by three aspect ratio properly. Yeah, very different intro. No animated dancing skeleton here. Same theme song, though, but this time in Adlib OPL3 instead of being uh, MIDI. enough. <laughs> see, control F10. Uh, okay. Prepare for body imaging and exploration. Let's strange though is although the DOS version still manages to fill up a whole CD it has way less content somehow click directly on the body to begin exploring to move the body to a new position click on the rotate body icon use the arrow keys or move the mouse to rotate the body click the mouse or hit any key to get a cursor for the most part though this does look um, very very similar to this section of it from the Windows version. The intestine. Still has the 3D models on this section. The intestine is the major part of the digestive system extending from the duodenum. Yep. And it's got, got all the text just like the other one does. Welcome to the Body Adventure Index. See, this, this is different. You click on index, and it actually gives you letters to choose from. First, you have to start typing on the keyboard on the Windows version. Z. Y. I wonder if they actually have an article for every single letter of the alphabet. A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. I. J. K. L. M. N O P Q. Yeah, that's the one I was not expecting, but it looks like well yeah, obviously quadrus. Yeah. R S T U V W X Y Z. Yep. So they do have articles for all twenty-six letters of the alphabet. Let's play Body Recall. 
think body recall will still have the same <laughs> oh was that was that actually on there i wasn't looking at x-ray liver brain lung stomach 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 lungs lung uh, kidneys heart 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 brain, brain. Kidneys. Liver. Great job. Shoulder, elbow. Ah, ah shoulder. Elbow. elbow. Okay. Making it easy for me. Ankle. Pelvis. Ankle. Vertebrae. Knee. Knee right next to knee. Vertebrae, vertebrae to vertebrae. Pelvis. pelvis to pelvis. Well done. So much food, no gallbladder, pancreas, ear, some balance ear. to ear. Oh, did I see? I got absorbed food. Okay. Oh, of cords. That's right. It's a weird beanbag chair shaped thing. Gallbladder. Bile to gallbladder. Insulin pancreas. to pancreas. Uterus. Babies grow here and oh, of course. Okay. Great job, doctor. You did good, kid. It's still just as stylistically dissonant as it was in the other version. Save the patient. It's up to you. Emergency does not work properly in DOSBox. Doctor, we just received four new admissions, and they are all in serious condition. To interview a patient, get more oh, information, or start a procedure, just click on the appropriate console. Click to start. Oh, well, that's strange. This version of it's working. This was not working properly. Whatever. <laughs> when I was testing it before, the mouse was really messed up, but now it's working just fine. Um, doctor? Oh. I w um, doctor? I was bitten by a crazy dog yesterday, and I'm really scared. The bite hurts a lot. I wasn't even doing anything to the dog. My mom's worried I might get rabies. She said you were going to stick me in the stomach with a bunch of really big needles. Can I leave now? That's 12-year-old male for you, huh? <laughs> Interesting. So they have voice acting for these characters in the DOS version, but they... Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean... Um... It would be, at least in cartoons, you know, Bart Simpson, etc. But this was... Maybe they only had two voice actors. It could be the same person that was doing the narration for the encyclopedia articles. Um, yeah, fewer options here. It just has a next patient button instead of next and previous patient buttons. My kid is 15. Hmm? Ah. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, he just wants to he just wants to get discounts at the um everywhere. <laughs> Where they have different kids pricing like kids tickets and adults tickets. You have been transported into the patient's brain. Find and zap all of the viruses to cure him. Remember, your patient was bitten by a mad dog just yesterday. Avoid damaging healthy cells. Hurry! Time is of the essence! Oh, in this version, it's still counting down the patient health while it's reading the, um, the initial instructions to you. Yes, yeah, so there's way fewer patients in this version. Great 
so job. You cured the patient of rabies. Rabies is a viral infection of the nervous system. The virus is transmitted to humans by rabid animal bites. Many cases are the result of dog bites. Raccoons and bats are other common carriers. Worldwide, there are an estimated 15,000 cases of rabies each year. There are very few cases in the U.S., however, largely as a result of intensive efforts to vaccinate dogs. Untreated cases are usually fatal. Treatment is given to patients when there is reasonable suspicion of rabies exposure following an animal bite. The primary treatment involves a several week course of anti-rabies antibody shots. The treatment works by enabling the body to eliminate all the rabies viruses before the disease develops. Fortunately, the medicine has changed and it is no longer administered through the stomach. The text is largely the same. Um, that was definitely re-recorded dialogue. Also, I was just noticing this mouse moves at different speeds along the x-axis from the y-axis. I'm like making circles here and it's making really large ovals. <laughs> also, it doesn't automatically scroll the text to keep up with the, um, the recording. Ow! Oh. oh, that hurts. Don't poke me in the belly like that. Oh, my stomach has been hurting since yesterday morning. I vomited twice yesterday, and now I have diarrhea. <sighs> Today I even collapsed at work because I felt so lightheaded. Doc, please help me. I'm feeling really sick. Murray Redmond? M-R-A-Y? Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Funny how the pictures become, or the, the pixels become so incomprehensible in such a hurry. We've got like a com complete lack of any sort of uh, bilinear filtering on this, so it's kind of to be expected. You have been transported to the patient's this lungs. You will need quickly to Quickly this time. Oh. Oh, the... Oh, this is, um... This is significantly different. So these blood vessels are way thinner than they are in the later version. Also, it does this weird pause where it goes up and down when you enter and exit the blood cell. Third blood vessel. Aha, here we are. Zap our green spheres once again. So I think the speed run time on this was like 2 minutes and 37 seconds or something like that. Marvelous work. You okay. cured the patient of gastroenter. John Davis, male, age 27. Doc, I've been feeling terrible for three days now. I can hardly move. Never been this sick before. I have a high fever. I'm having a hard time breathing. Keep coughing and coughing. Hardly anything ever comes up. Tylenol helps make my fever go down, but I still feel like I'm gonna drop dead. Please help me. I just don't know what to do. There's no trouble breathing as he's having this speech is very breathy. It's like, ugh, doctor, please help me. <laughs> you have been transported to the... Yeah, how many different... Oh, I see what's going on. This is weird, so all of the, um... All of the exits are, like, lined up with the edges there. Okay, so what he said, breathing, so... It's lungs? Ah, uh, yep. Oh, more of the same thing. Wait, no, these are slightly different. That one was a uh, flu, wasn't it? I'm going to sleep here, so I'm going to get up 73 sleepy. Okay, dog. Good night, Trish, and I'll see you later.
I'm just going to finish up curing these last few patients. And then we can go look at this version of the heart attack video. Which might actually be considered kind of creepier than the um, other version. Because these don't line up, you can't just beeline it straight from one lung to the other. You have to actually move across during the heart. Oh yeah, I should probably zap a... Oh no! You zapped the lung cell! Just wanted to hear it. Where is the rest of the... Oh, there's one. Great job! You cured patient, patient cured of pneumonia. pneumonia. Huzzah. Joan Atkins, male, age 65. Doc, for the past few months, whenever I walk up the stairs in my house, I feel pressure in my chest. Pain has been getting worse lately. Sometimes I even feel pain in my jaw, my left shoulder. And when it's really bad, I have to sit down for a while pain seems to go away. I don't know what to do now. Future 173 sleepy. The day. Right, and this is the guy that was... You have been transported into the patient's stomach. Okay, cholesterol. Find all of the cholesterol plaques in the patient's arteries. Right, this is the guy that I was like, how the heck did this guy not die on the way to the hospital? First we zap his... Actually, they kind of almost look like they could be bananas. They're like banana lemons. Yeah. So we cure the guy of his... Banimans? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, every single one of this guy's arteries is completely clogged up. Like they're wedged, wedged in there too. You cleared the cholesterol plaques from the pit. Um, doctor? Uh... Oh! Mm -hmm. Oh, that... You have been transported oh. to the patient's lungs. They let you repeat you them. To... Zap, 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 zap. Failure condition. Oh, no. Oops. The oh. patient is now in critical condition. This procedure has been terminated. Stand by for unit reset. Please attempt the procedure again immediately. Don't even know if it did the same. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, so the layout is a little bit different. We've got a lot of the same exhibits, though. I think the main thing is that we go to the... Okay, so here we have hospital. The front entrance to the hospital is locked after hours. If you want to enter at this time of the night, you will need to go around back to the rear entrance. Yeah, so that is different from the Windows version. It actually makes you go all the way around. Whoop. And the elevator door actually opens. <laughs> Elevators still do not work like that, though. And then you're in the top floor, and you go all the way over to the other elevator, which you have to push the button on. Then back to the first floor, and then finally, you make your way back to not stomach, not brain, but emergency room. Ah, uh, also I noticed this too on the way back. <laughs> so I guess they realized people were getting lost in this hospital, so they added their 
signs to the walls in the newer version to let you know which direction it was to everything. Oh, and I was walking all the way back here because in the other version it had the button you click on to go back, but in this one, escape will exit emergency game. 3D Body Theater. Ooh, to select a movie, dramatic. Click on one of the five movie icons displayed across the bottom of the screen. To play. Well, we already know what we want. We want the heart attack movie. Myocardial infarction. Yeah, even the music is more dramatic than in the other version. Like we could go through all of these videos for comparison, but I think I am pretty much done for tonight, so... Um, how do you return to the main menu on this? Escape's not doing anything. Oh, body. Yeah, be like, how do you how do you leave? You touch the word Sony or LG on your TV. Oh, thank you for using 3D Body Adventure. Try these other great new products from Knowledge Adventure: 3D Dinosaur Adventure, America Adventure, Bug Adventure, Kids Zoo, IMAX Discoverers, IMAX Speed, Science Adventure 2. Space Adventure, Undersea Adventure, and Zerk's Learning Safari. Hmm. I need to take a screenshot of this so I know what to look for. <laughs> well, I already have, I think, two of these. I do actually have successfully acquisitionated, so we could take a look at them. That'll be first time look for me, because 3D Body Adventure was the only one I had back in the day. Exit.